Hallelujah. God is in this place. His glory is here. Uh, anybody ready to encounter the glory in new ways? There's always another realm. There's always another place in God. There's always something we've we've never seen, never experienced. How many have had some glory encounters over the last few days? You've seen something, heard something, felt something, received something. Yeah? Awesome. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, I would love to pray over the offering. That'd be great. Father, why don't you just stretch out your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I thank you that this offering is blessed. Lord, I thank you that even as we've sown seed, Lord, I thank you that you are faithful to take it, to receive it, to multiply it, and to bring forth divine supernatural harvest that we could not bring forth in our own ability. Lord, I ask that this offering would be multiplied in the natural for this ministry in supernatural ways. Lord, I ask that this this offering would be multiplied in the natural in our own lives, even as we've given in supernatural ways. Lord, cause new miracles to come unto us. Cause new blessings to show up at our door. Lord, cause new favor to flow like a river and increase to surround us on every single side in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Awesome. Praise God. When you guys count this offering tonight, make sure you count it at least twice. At least twice. At least. And if it multiplies a second time, count it again. Okay? (laughs) <laughs> I like when things like that happen uh, Janet and Angela and I We had hosted a conference In uh, London, Ontario Maybe about 12 years ago And uh, Kay Byer was there At that conference speaking And we had counted the offerings one night I think it was a night Maybe it was a morning uh, But as the offerings were being counted uh, it was a small offering that had been received and we just knew that God wanted to bless us in a bigger way and we just had faith to count it again. And we did and guess what happened? It increased. Like that's crazy. And uh, and so because it increased we counted it again and when we counted it again it changed again and it increased. And uh, and then I forget how many times it was counted but finally they got to a place of counting and it kept on remaining the same. And so we took that offering and Put it in the bank. Hallelujah. And uh, we have seen supernatural increase come in so many different ways. Uh, It's just phenomenal what God will do for us and through us if we're open to the moving of His Spirit, the moving of His glory. Now, I shared last night in regards to the angelic realm. And I was sharing about that force of favor that God has in our life that includes the ministry service of angels. And uh, as I was sharing the testimony last night, you probably heard me tell that testimony about uh, Dr. K. Byer and I being in Hollywood, up on the street on Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, unbeknownst to us, there was an angel that came up to us, appeared just like a a, a human natural woman. And uh, so that settles the issue of people who say, well, there are no female angels. Well... Not only are there female angels, there's Asian female angels. And uh, we met one. But we didn't even discern it at first that that's what um, she was. She just looked like a regular person on the street. She just had a lot of information. And uh, she came directly to us. And then the next thing we knew, she was gone and we didn't see her anymore. And uh, I asked Dr. K last night because I just told the story test uh, the testimony spontaneously I asked her if she had some pictures and she didn't have the pictures on her but she had pictures back in the place where they're staying and so tonight she brought some pictures so this is the picture of uh, Jay Chow ministering on Hollywood Boulevard you can see him there at the piano can you see that picture okay and then this is several hours later when we're in the steakhouse and we've got our jumper cables hooked up to his back in this picture right here <laughs> and there's some power transfer going on in this picture and uh, and then I told you a, f- uh, a couple years later uh, we found out that he had given his heart to Jesus Christ and God has done a wonderful work in his life thank you for bringing those Kay appreciate it I think the the subject of 
uh, the angelic realm, the heavenly realm, the glory realm is so fascinating and it doesn't matter how much I hear testimonies of the glory it doesn't matter how many times I encounter things in the glory things in the heavenlies uh, evangelic uh, visitations I want more of Jesus I just want more of him because every touch of divine presence causes me to fall deeper and deeper in love with him realizing that there is no limit to his goodness there is no limit to his blessing there is no limit to the favor or the force of favor he wants to release in our lives and there's no limit to the increase that he wants to bring into our lives and so i get excited with every single testimony every single uh, encounter and uh, i do have uh, several dvds here i just want to mention real quickly uh, called Angel Stories. It's a movie, a documentary in regards to the angelic realm, and it was uh, produced several years ago. They produced this for uh, one of those channels where they're educational, uh, somewhat educational, until it gets to like Hoarders and uh, other shows like that. Uh, but I think it was the um, either the Discovery Channel, the History Channel, one of those channels. Uh, had come in and they had produced a whole series of spiritual topic, uh, spiritual subjects, um, television programs. And one of those was uh, talking about the angelic realm and I, I was invited to be a participant in that. And so I shared several testimonies about the angelic. I believe I shared several testimonies about when I was a child and I was uh, familiar and aware of the angelic. And then I shared testimonies also once God reopened that realm to me in my early 20s and uh, and the things that I've seen in that regard. There's also other wonderful, uh, there's some uh, uh, theologians, rabbis, and uh, other people that are on here. Uh, Jill Austin, our friend who's now in heavenly glory, she's on here. Also John Paul Jackson, and I think it's wonderful because their testimonies were recorded. And their stories are documented. And although they're not with us here now, they can still continue to minister over and over and over and over again. I had one of the most unusual experiences. Um, well, let me just back up by saying yesterday morning, I woke up in the morning at my home. And uh, I had this thought. I, I just want to watch some old videos of uh, Francis Hunter, Charles and Francis Hunter, who were our personal mentors in the miraculous. And so I didn't have easy access to, I have all their DVDs and all of their books and they, uh, I love, I don't know about you, but one of my most favorite gifts to receive is a book. And because I love the seeds of wisdom that a book contains. And uh, they're one of my most pre precious prized possessions that, that I have in my home. And we have a whole library in our home just filled with glory books and glory resources. But among all the books, my favorite of all books, although I like them all, my favorite of all books are the ones that are signed, personally signed and autographed. And uh, the last time I was with Frances Hunter, she was so frail in her body, uh, I wanted her to sign uh, the book that had been written about her life and uh, was called M Messengers of Healing. I think that's what the book was called. And somebody had done a, a, a biography or, uh, yeah, a biography of their life. And, uh, and I'd wanted her to sign it, but she was too frail to pick up that pen and actually use it. And she told me, she said, Joshua, she said, when I get out of this bed, she said, the devil's tried to give me another black eye but she says I'm going to give him a bigger black eye because when I get out of this but she said last year when he made me sick I got out of the hospital and I wrote seven books she said this time when I get out of the bed I'm going to write 14 uh, and you know what she didn't end up getting out of that bed here on the earth but she's dancing in heaven tonight and uh, when I was at her bedside I wanted her to sign that book because she had signed so many others for me and she couldn't do it I said you know what Francis I said just put on some lipstick and just kiss it and so she took that book and she put lipstick on her lips and she kissed that book. And I think that's my most favorite book that I have on my bookshelves is that one that Francis kissed. Uh, but yesterday I had this desire just to go back and watch some of her teachings, uh, just, to rem just to thinking about her. And I realized tomorrow will be uh, the anniversary of her graduation to heaven. And uh, it's interesting because I was in the studio down in Phoenix preparing to record my Spirit Spa CD, Spirit Spa number two, uh, on July 14th, 2009. 
the day that Francis graduated, and I actually got a text about 30 seconds before I was ready to start. And the text came in on my phone and said that Francis had gone to heaven, and I was so wanting her to get out of that bed and for her to spend more time with us here on the earth. And although I was celebrating her graduation, I was not happy that she wasn't with me anymore, that she wasn't with us anymore, that, that we lost a great general. And, uh, and for that reason, Spirit Spot 2, almost the entire city is in minor keys. And uh, it, it has a whole different kind of thing that I was originally planning to do. Uh, but it's still beautiful. It's still blessed and everything. Uh, anyway, I'm sharing all that. I don't know why I'm sharing all that, but that's just the behind the scenes of, of it. But I was watching these videos of Francis Hunter yesterday morning, and it reminded me of a time when we had been in our home in Palm Springs. It was right after Francis had graduated to, to heaven. This may have been in, oh gosh, maybe early 2010, maybe halfway through the year. And I was watching these healing videos and as I was watching these videos Francis was just declaring God's word for healing just proclaiming it declaring it into the atmosphere and I'm sitting in our media room on the couch watching this on the the big screen television and as I'm watching this the next thing I know there are angels that begin to walk into the room where I'm sitting and it wasn't like just one angel or two angels. It was literally like a parade of angels. Just one after the other, after the other, after the other. Now people have asked me oftentimes, what do these angels look like when you see them? Well, they've come in all different forms and fashions. Like I told you last, uh, last night that there was an angel that we saw on Hollywood Boulevard that appeared like an Asian female. Uh, there's been angels that I've seen that have been wearing robes. Uh, there's been times that they wear robes and they have wings. There's been times I've seen them with robes and they have no wings at all. There's been other times they just appear in what looks like plain clothes. But oftentimes when I see the angelic realm with my open eyes in the natural, the way that they come, I can literally see like an outline of their form. And it's like I can see the outline of their head, uh, their neck, their shoulders. And for some reason, I don't understand, it generally stops about here. And I can't see much more than just below the shoulders. And then when I look at their face, oftentimes I do not see their face. It's just I can just see the outline of their form. And this is the way that they appeared that night when I was watching these healing DVDs with uh, Francis Hunter. And these angels were coming one after the other after the other. I could just see these forms just coming in one after the other after the other. And I didn't understand what this was about. Now, interestingly enough... Uh, I think it was a few nights earlier, I'd been in my bedroom late at night, somewhere probably between 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock in the morning, and I was studying the Word of God, and I had the Word of God just playing over and over and over, and as the Word of God was playing, I was sitting in the corner of my bedroom, and these angels appeared again, just like a parade, coming from the ensuite of our bedroom into the bedroom where we sleep, and they were just coming one after the other after the other, and I, I was wondering the same thing. What are, these, what are these angels here for? Because God doesn't do anything by accident. He doesn't release angels into your atmosphere, into your presence by accident. And I didn't understand what they were doing. And then here I was watching Francis Hunter. These same angels come in again, and they're just parading through the room. And when I asked the Lord about it that time, I got clarity. And the Lord spoke to me and told me in my spirit that it was Psalm 103, verse 20. It was angels hearkening or moving in action according to the word, the voice of his word, the word of God. The word of God was being declared on that DVD, and this is the, the thing that blew my mind about it, is that Frances Hunter had already graduated to heaven. But she left a legacy, she left some material, her testimony, her declaration here on the earth. And she was recite she was on she was in heaven. But her DVD was on the earth, and she was in my media room declaring God's word about healing. And guess what was happening in my media room? Angels were being released into my house because Francis was opening up her mouth and declaring the word of God. Now, is that crazy or what? And suddenly I realized these were angels of healing that were coming and being released into our lives, into our home, into our family. In that moment, they were responding to the word of God. God. They don't just respond to the word, but the voice of his word. 
We must give voice to God's word. As we give voice to God's word, it releases the angelic. Now, there's a whole lot of exciting testimonies about angels. I don't know if anybody's interested in this realm, in the glory realm, the heavenly realm. I'm not talking about worshiping angels or getting all obsessed with angels, but understanding that God has assigned them to your lives. And if you don't perceive what God has given to you, you'll never cooperate or come into agreement with it. But once you understand that realm, you begin moving in a function uh, with that realm that God has opened. Now, who's interested in receiving a copy of this? Okay, you come and get it. You stood up. I think you're serious about this. Okay. You're really going to like that, that DVD. It's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. And, there's, and that's the only one that has been released so far on DVD. I'm hoping that very soon they'll release the other ones. We did episodes about portals, supernatural portals. Uh, we did episodes about miracles, signs, and wonders. We did one about prophets and uh, the prophetic voice today. And uh, so I hope that they'll release all of those DVDs very soon. Also, come to our Legacy Generations of Glory conference in October 8th to 10th. Put that down on your calendar. It's going to be good. Dr. K. Byer will be there. Steve Swanson, Robert Slairdon. And uh, I will be there. And Janet will be there. And the Holy Spirit will be there. So I'm going to give this to you. And I hope you will come. God bless you. Okay. I want you to open your Bible with me tonight. There's a few places I want to take you in the Word tonight. You know, the Word of God is powerful. And sometimes you have this idea that, you know, when you're reading the Word, it's just... Like I said last night about prayer, you're just doing your duty or, you know, it's just it's just black and white pages. Um, but the Bible is living. It's breathing. And when we get into the word, we must expect for the word to also get into us. Now, I just opened up my Bible to uh, Mark six. I'm on my way somewhere else in here. But the wonderful thing is I just found these. I'm going to show these to you. These little tiny leaves. Do you see this? Um, here's another one here. These leaves are very special. I was just with uh, a dear couple out in Alberta last month. And I had I spent some time with them. They're a beautiful Christian couple. They've been saved for quite a while. And they just love the Lord dearly. But they said that uh, they had had an angelic encounter where these angels had appeared to them in dreams. And then uh, I think it was maybe a week later, a few days later, as they were sitting in their kitchen, something was happening outside the window on their property, and they realized that there was an angel standing on their property. And uh, what are you going to do when an angel shows up and stands on your property like that? I would go out and see what the angel's doing, right? And so they went out to see uh, what was happening, and they said that when they went out there, the angel was no longer there. Are you getting gold all over you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, the gold is coming. Hallelujah. The glory is coming. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me see. I want to see it. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's come here. You got to show some people here. Stand up. Look at this. It's coming all over your hands. It's wonderful. You ought to check your hands right now where you're at. Because when the gold begins to come, it comes in the atmosphere. It just comes in the atmosphere. The glory is... I'm getting gold on my hands even right now. Look at that. Now that I'm looking. Do you see that? <laughs> Anybody else getting some gold on your hands? Wait, you're getting some gold. Praise God. You're getting some gold. Awesome. Praise God. Now, if you're getting gold, just praise the Lord. Thank Him for it. Just thank Jesus. Come on, everything that has breath, just praise the Lord. Give Him glory. And if you're not getting gold on your hands, you praise the Lord. Give Him glory. Honor Jesus Christ. Listen, we can celebrate 
these little miracles that are happening in the atmosphere for as they come unto us it's simply the beginnings of something greater that God wants to do for us hallelujah oh yes yeah, sometimes the signs come and it's just a little tiny speck of gold or it's just a little manifestation of oil or it's just a little flash of lightning or it's just a little bit of healing and increase of health or wholeness in our bodies but if we can recognize the beginnings of what God is doing and if we can learn to celebrate the beginnings he who has begun a good work inside of us will be faithful to complete it and cause it to grow. Somebody say, He's growing the glory in me. He's growing the glory on me. He's growing His glory around me. Now listen to me. There was an angel that appeared for this couple out on their property. They went out to see that place where the angel was standing. The angel was no longer there. But guess what was in the land? A plant that had never been there before. And it started as just a little tiny uh, little sprout of something. They didn't know what it was. And they said it just began to grow rapidly just like a vine. It began to grow out and it began to grow around and around and around. And they ended up taking uh, these leaves that I showed you. They ended up taking them to different horticultural specialists. And nobody could figure out what kind of a plant this was. Finally, they took it to somebody who recognized it as a plant that was known in ancient times to bring healing. Is that crazy or what? And, and they said that this plant is extremely rare and hardly is found anywhere. And yet God deposited it there on their property in that moment when that angel came with an angelic visitation. Now, the amazing thing about that is God will give us moments in glory and, and cause us to discern, recognize the moments, the atmospheres, the places, the signs, the wonders. Why? Because God wants to do something through it. Now, people have asked me, they said, Brother Joshua, about this gold, what does it mean? This just seems crazy to me. Why would God make someone sparkle? Why would God just put a little sparkly on your hand or on your face? Or what's the point of putting sparkles on your clothing or on your Bible? It's not about a sparkle. It's about the manifestation of God's glory. Listen, whether God wants to release gold or oil or healing or gemstones, or manna from heaven, or chocolate chip cookies, or Oreo cookies, or whatever God wants to pour down. Come on. I want to receive it, because if it's coming from Him, it's a manifestation of glory. If it's coming from Him, there is a reason for it. Oftentimes I've discovered we don't understand the reason right away. There'll be times we have to stand in this realm, in this manifestation, and we have to seek God. We have to pray to God. We have to get into the Word and say, God, what is it that you're giving me? God, what is it that you're showing to me? God, what are you saying right now? What are you doing right now? But the wonderful thing is as we get into the face of God, I tell you, He's right there in our face. And he'll begin speaking even by his still small voice. And he'll begin bringing an understanding and revelation and wisdom for what he's doing. Now the Lord's told me many different things about the gold. One of the first, um, I hope you don't mind this. Pastor Joan, I'm going to invite you to come just real quick. Is that okay? I just want you to share just a little bit about when that gold first started to come, what the Lord showed you about that white horse. Is that okay? Is that okay? <laughs> I know I'm putting you on the spot, but I know it was it was probably 20 years ago. So I, would you rather Pastor David chairs for you? <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, the dream that God gave you about the white horse. Oh, oh, there was a white horse, and he was quite large very big, heavy, and when he was galloping around inside the sanctuary of Faith Tabernacle in London, gold was coming down, gold dust was falling down, 
quite heavily. Not only that, but it was coming up this way. And it was meeting in the middle. And the Lord was on the horse. And he had a two-edged sword in his hand, and he was holding up it up quite high. Also, um, he had a, a crown on his head that was all interlocked, many crowns, just like you read about in Revelation. It was quite breathtaking. I could hardly even talk about it because it was so awesome. That was really neat. <laughs> it's totally awesome. <laughs> the amazing thing about that is that God gave this dream to Pastor Joan before the manifestation had been seen in the natural. She got this in a dream and she saw God doing it and it was years later that in the physical it began to manifest in the natural. Is that amazing or what? Now the Bible says, thank you, you are such a blessing. I love you. I love you dearly. <laughs> Something yeah. else real quick yeah, the Lord brought to my mind was when we were in Leamington in an evening service and Joshua was sitting um, in a pew and I was sitting across from him and all of a sudden I looked over at him and there was water running down his face. And I thought maybe I should just go to the washroom and get a paper towel and so he can wipe the water off his face. <laughs> and it kept pouring down off his face. It was water. His mom and dad weren't even there that evening. Some young people had just gone, and I had gone along. And um, Pastor Bill Wilson invited us up to the front. So we all went up to the front, and he prayed for us, and I ended up on the floor, and he ended up on the floor beside me. And we were under water, and we were breathing <laughs> normally. Yeah. And it was deep water. It wasn't just shallow. The water was quite deep, and we were breathing just, and we weren't disturbed by it at all. And I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, <laughs> this isn't real in the natural. But it was all spiritual, and it was all in preparation for Joshua to step into the role that the Lord had for him. Awesome. Love it. Thank you. The Bible says clearly that God needs a prophet, a prophetic voice, to speak into the atmosphere his intentions. Because unless we speak it forth, God can do nothing unless he first reveals it through his servants, the prophets. And that's why it's so important that when God begins moving, God begins doing things. Sometimes we get it in the natural, sometimes we get it in the spirit. But there's really no difference because if it's God, it's God. And we need to give voice to what God is doing in order for the greater manifestation to come to the corporate body. God is not just wanting that one or two would be blessed among us, but God is desiring that every single one of us would move in this glory realm together. That corporately we come into the greater realms, that we go into the deeper depths, that we would begin to enter into those waters that are so deep, we begin breathing underwater. Hallelujah. That we go so deep into the glory, that we begin breathing that glory, that that glory becomes our life, that glory becomes our sufficiency, that glory becomes everything that we need. Now the Lord revealed these things to Sister Joan about the gold dust before it was physically manifesting, but he showed her the Lord on the white horse, and the horse as it was pawing the streets of gold, that gold dust coming down. It was a sign that when the gold begins to come, listen, there's someone that's on the white horse getting ready to ride. Huh. Jesus is coming soon, whether you believe it or not, he is. In Jewish culture, the, the bridegroom will prepare and send gifts of gold. All different gifts, but they're of gold. Precious, expensive, beautiful. And he'll send them to the, the, the bride before he gets married to let her know he's on his way. He's coming. It's really going to happen. The wedding's right around the corner. You can know that I'm making preparations and I'm getting ready and I'm fixing something for you when you get those gifts of gold. 
Now, when the Lord began speaking to me about the gold, there's many different things he said, but one of the, the significant things he showed me is that when the gold begins, and it's coming more on my hands, even right now as I'm speaking, I don't know if you can see that. I had a little bit on the palm, but now it's coming into the, it's coming into the, right into the middle and down on my fingers. Thank you, Lord. Some of you need to check your hands again. And uh, the reason why I encourage you to do that is because it will encourage you when you see the miracle. Oftentimes we miss the miracle because our eyes are not open to see it. But the Lord showed me, you're getting one flake, I love that. (laughs) If you get one flake, you can celebrate that one little tiny manifestation, glimpse of glory. Thank you, Lord. And if you're seeing nothing right now, you can celebrate also because your one flake is right around the corner, okay? <laughs> I've discovered that the, the signs and wonders are never a sign of wh- who's holier than the other person or who's better than the other. It's, it's none of that. And, and anybody who has that in their mind, you need to clear your mind from that. It has nothing to do with, oh, God loves that person more than he loves the other person. Listen, together we are the body of Christ, together. separated we're just like that arm hanging on that that board right there come on and you might have the sword in your hand but if all you are is that arm right there on the board come on that arm can't go nowhere it can't move anywhere it can't do anything because it needs an elbow and it, and it, <laughs> thank you This is what that arm needs. And together we become the body of Christ. And what God is showing us in these signs and wonders is that as it comes upon one, as it comes upon another, it's coming upon us all. And it's a sign that God is covering His body with His glory. Why? In preparation for the soon coming and return of Jesus Christ. You better be ready because Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, show me that this manifestation of the gold represents creative miracles. Because it's something that was invisible becoming visible. Something that was unseen becoming seen. God doing something to create in this atmosphere what has existed in another atmosphere for a long time. And when it's being released, it can cause faith to rise in your spirit. God, if you're able to release and create that gold in the seeing realm, how much more will you do everything you said in your word that you could do? How much more will you heal us? Because you are the Lord that healeth me. How much more will you heal me? Because the Bible says, by his stripes, I am healed. Lord, you'll prosper us. Why? Because he takes delight and pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Jesus became poor so that you would be made rich. That's what the scriptures say. So when the gold's coming tonight, you ought to put your faith into action. Just begin to receive what God is saying, what he's doing, what he's releasing. Because there's some creative miracles that you've been believing for for a long time. And you're in the atmosphere right now of the creative miracle realm. You're in the atmosphere of glory where there's something being released. God is making and releasing power transfers tonight. There's a power transfer in this force of favor. Hallelujah. There is a power transfer from heaven to earth. From the divine supernatural into the natural. From the unseen realm into the seeing realm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your Bible with me to Mark 16. That's where we're going to go. And I have two translations for you tonight. I might read a little bit out of the NIV, and I might read a little bit out of the Amplified because it's louder. It's Amplified. Mark 16. Let's go to verse 15. This is Jesus speaking. And Jesus said to them, he said to them, Go into all the world 
and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel to every creature of the whole human race. Somebody said to me, they said, well, what do you think about this LGBT? Preach the gospel to everybody. Carry this glory to everybody. Well, Brother Joshua, do you know what this person's doing? Yeah, I know about that because it's, it's out in the open. But what people don't know is what you're doing. And I can see it right now in the spirit. And there's a whole lot of stuff you got on the inside that you need a little bit of Jesus too. <laughs> Preach the good news to all creation, to the whole human race. Everybody needs the glory. Everybody needs the love of God. Everybody, There is not one person on the face of the earth that does not need Jesus. And our responsibility is not to pick and choose who gets to hear the message, who gets to receive a healing, who gets a deliverance, who gets to have a little bit of signs and wonders and miracles. Our responsibility is to carry this power everywhere we go. Everywhere. Everywhere. Jesus told us to do it. He's the one who told us. I'm not saying this is just my idea or just a good idea or my own philosophy about it. It's the Bible. It says, Jesus said to them, go into all the world. All is inclusive of everything and exclusive of nothing. All means all. Well, no, just the, ch- just the churches and the church camps. No, all the world. Everywhere. Everywhere. Carry the gospel everywhere. Preach. Publish. Openly. The good news. The good news. The gospel. Now, this is the other thing. You got to carry the gospel. (laughs) When you go, don't carry your own ideas or your own thoughts about the situation or your your version of what you think God wants but carry the gospel the gospel is the good news to all men it's the good news to all women it's the good news to the old and it's the good news to the young it's the good you know why it's the good news because it's the news that liberates and brings freedom It's the news that brings release where the captives have tried to to, to bind you up and and tried to hold you. The enemies tried to hold you and keep you down and tried to hold you back from your destiny. But this is the good news that takes off all those chains and takes away all that bondage and removes all those shackles and it opens up prison doors and it knocks down dividing walls. And as this good news is preached... The Bible says you will know the truth. And that truth will set you free. Well, it's interesting. The Bible doesn't say you're going to know a form of religion and you'll be set free. Actually, religion will get you into more bondage than you've ever been in. Come on. It will just put you in another ritual. Just put you in another tradition. Just put you in another place of having to do this, having to do that, having to satisfy and please and make you go crazy but true relationship with Jesus Christ when we receive the gospel the good news we receive not only the words in the book but we receive the word himself oh (laughs) what happens when you carry the gospel is you carry The essence, the presence of Jesus. When you carry the good news and preach the good news, you're releasing into the atmosphere the very person and presence of Jesus that will make the necessary changes that need to be made. When you preach the good news, 
You're carrying the word, releasing the word. And the Bible says that he who believes, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on the gospel, and him whom it sets forth and is baptized will be saved. Saved from what? From the penalty of eternal death. But he who does not believe, who does not adhere to and trust in and rely on the gospel and him whom it sets forth will be condemned. But these attesting signs will accompany those who believe. How many believers are in this place tonight? Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. God, I'm a believer of your word. Not just a little bit of your word, but your, your, your word, your whole word, nothing but the word. All the, all the words you got, Lord, I, I believe your word. When you speak, I believe it. Lord, what, what you've given to me through your written word, I receive it. Lord, I believe your word. Not only does believing the word, responding to the word, receiving Jesus, responding to his invitation, guarantee you eternal salvation but it's talking about here on earth these attesting signs will accompany those who believe now this is talking about the power transfer that takes place believing the word causes the power of heaven to come down from the supernatural into the natural realm being a believer of the word a receiver of the word opens you up to being a releaser of that word also hallelujah (laughs) there's gonna be some power transmissions tonight in this play i mean from one realm to another realm from one place to another place hallelujah these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will drive out demons We receive power to drive out demons, not in any name, but in the name of Jesus. There's a lot of different forms of supernatural expression, but you know there's only one way into the glory. Only one way. There's only one way into divine presence, and that's through the person and the presence of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, in His name, we have authority over the enemy, over demonic spirits, over demonic assignment, over demonic attempts, curses to destroy our lives. In the name of Jesus, we have authority over the power of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, there is a power transfer. The force of favor comes all over you in the name of Jesus. As somebody said to me, I don't feel called to the deliverance ministry. I've, I've seen deliverance ministries. I've seen, you know, those ministries that all they do is they cast demons out of people. I don't feel called to that ministry. If you're a believer, let me tell you right now that you're going to need this sign to accompany you. You're going to need it. You think, well, that's not, that's not my ministry calling. Well, there's a reason why God is giving you this sign as a believer. Well, I'm never around anybody that needs to demons cast out of them. Look again. Look again. Come on. It doesn't have to be a gruesome thing. Every time I meet a a, a wonderful believer and they tell me that they're battling with cancer, I recognize there's a devil that needs to be cast out. 
And I'm not saying that to make anybody feel bad. You know, there's been a, a wrong teaching that's gone around. Well, if you've got some kind of demonic spirit, then you did something bad or you sinned or you went. And I think Jesus addressed that whole thing in John chapter 5, I think it was. It wasn't about the sin. It wasn't about anything. Listen, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Whether you're the most holiest person on earth or whether you're the worst person that's ever lived, the enemy's after you. It's just the way it is. Cancer's a devil if I ever saw it. Leukemia's a devil if I ever saw it. Diabetes is a devil if I ever saw it. Arthritis is a devil. Come on. Anything that the doctors would say is incurable is demonic. It has a demonic spirit behind it. Does that mean you're possessed by demons? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm saying there's just an enemy assignment over your life to try to take you out. Try to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the good news, somebody say good news, is this. That for the believer, in the name that's above every other name, the name above cancer, the name above arthritis, the name above leukemia, the the name above fibromyalgia, the name above every other name... You can cast out that devil. (laughs) And be totally set free. Poverty is a devil. Who? No, brother Joshua, poverty is not a devil. The money is evil. That's what's evil, money. No, the Bible says the love of money. It's talking about the greed, the lust for, the craving desire for money is an evil thing. It is. You know why the love of money is an evil thing? Because the love of money comes from a spirit of poverty. You didn't hear what I said. The love of money doesn't come from a spirit of divine prosperity. The love of money... The lust, the craving, desire for finances comes from a spirit of poverty that has tried to deceive you and make you believe that money is what's going to make you happy. Money is what's going to make you blessed. Money is what's going to prosper. Listen, that's a lie from the pit of hell. Money is a tool that God will use among many other tools. And if we don't love the tools, but we love the one who is over it all, the creator over everything, if we get our heart right about these things, guess what? God will give us authority in these areas. He will. He'll give us authority. Poverty, the spirit of poverty is a devil. I've seen what the spirit of poverty does in the nations of the earth. It causes children to go hungry. It causes families to be torn apart. It causes mothers and fathers to have dissension. It causes family breakups. It causes marriage problems. Listen, the number one reason that people get divorced in the earth, the number one reason, is over financial matters. And it's all rooted in a spirit of poverty. All of it. Some say, I'm going to cast out that devil. (laughs) (laughs) now I don't want to become demon conscious in the sense of everywhere I look I see another demon there's some teaching that has made people so aware of evil that all they can see is evil you'll get whatever you're looking for so if you look for everything that's bad in the earth You're surely going to see it, and it's going to give you a really bad day, a bad week, a bad year. You're going to have a bad life if all you're looking for is what's bad. Praise God, we have authority over these devils. In other words, we can look for the glory, and when the devil tries to pick up his nasty head in the middle of God's glory, you can take authority of that little monster, strangle his neck, and cast him out. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Okay. Now that's the first sign. That's the first power transfer that God gives us in these signs. The next one it says, 
is they will speak in new languages. Now, this new languages that it's talking about, I've gone in and I've studied these, these tongues that come from God. And I've discovered that these supernatural tongues encompass a range of languages. It encompasses languages that are ancient, languages that were spoken in the past are no longer spoken today. It also encompasses foreign languages that are spoken in other places, other nations, among other people, other dialects. And yet you don't know, but God has a way of giving that language to you. It also includes languages that have yet to be spoken, languages that have yet to be developed. You say languages are still being created. Yes, they are. They are. Has anybody texted recently in the last like 10 years? There's a whole new language. Do you understand that? There's a whole new language that's being developed. Do you know what LOL means? Yeah, it's part of a new language. R-O-F-L. Do you know what that means? Roll on the floor laughing. That's a... That had to have come out of the Toronto airport. Christian Fellowship. Uh, that... That abbreviation. Uh, there are new languages that are being developed. Now, in this realm of the Spirit, God has a way of giving you future languages that you can speak, begin to prophesy. Now, why do you think God would want to give you some future languages? There might be some things wrapped up, some miracles wrapped up, some, some uh, 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 manifestations wrapped up, some moves of God even wrapped up in those future languages. And as you give voice to it, God will watch over His Word that you're speaking and declaring and decreeing. Watch over it to perform it. Make it happen. In the realm of the spirit, there's also heavenly languages. These are languages that are not spoken anywhere on the earth, are not intended to be spoken in any nation of the earth, except for for citizens of heaven to bring down that heavenly language that is spoken in the spiritual realm, in the heavenly dimension, and it comes down from that realm into our realm, and we become the channels, we become the conduit, we become that which gives voice to the sound of of God. Now there's another power transfer in that. There's another power transfer. Now we've done studies, uh, or we haven't done the studies, but we've researched and discovered that studies have been done in regards to speaking in tongues. There's healing that comes in that sound. There's mental stability that comes in that sound. There's comprehension and wisdom that comes in that sound. This is a sound that God wants you to release in your home. He wants you to release it over your family. He wants you to release it in your churches. He wants you to release it in your car, and your automobile. As you're driving down the road, you can begin to pray in tongues. There's times Lincoln and I, we get in the car, and I tell him, Lincoln, start speaking in tongues. He looks at me sometimes, Dad, really? Yes, do it. Do it. Just speak in tongues. Right here? Yeah, right here. As I'm driving, you speak in tongues. <laughs> We've got to become more familiar with this realm. And we ought to not just wait for church to do it. We ought to not wait just for a prayer meeting to do it. Don't just wait till some sickness comes up to speak in tongues. Speak in tongues in the morning, in the afternoon, at night. Begin to pray and stir yourself up in your spiritual language. I've discovered there's something that happens in that dimension. As we pray in the Spirit, we get so stirred up in the Spirit, some God begins moving heaven into our spirit, and suddenly there's a comprehension to know things we never known before because there's something coming in us that we never held before. In the early days when I was leading praise and worship, when the Lord first began giving me songs, I would be in my bedroom and, and I'd be spending time in worship. It would be hours I'd spend with the Lord. And out of those hours of worship, the Lord would begin giving songs. In those early days, I would be sitting under the preaching of the Word. My, my pastor, David Elliott, who's here tonight, he'd be preaching the Word of God, a real good Word from God. 
But in the middle of his message, I would hear a song. I would, I would hear a connection, something from heaven, and I'd, I'd write it down, and I'd, I'd be very careful with it. I'd write down the words, and then I'd go home, and I'd figure out the chords, and I'd spend hours and days sometimes working on those songs, and there was a blessing in it because it was what God was doing in my life at that moment. But then a few years later, I was in, at a minister's conference in Dallas, Texas, and the Spirit began to speak to me. It was in my spirit. And he said, Joshua, my mercies are new every morning. And with every new day comes a new song. And with every new song comes a new realm of glory. With every new realm of glory comes new miracles. This was a challenge. It was an invitation from the Spirit. And the invitation was this. With every new day comes a new song. See, I'd understood about new songs, and God was giving me new songs, and sometimes I would get them one day, and the, uh, the next day I'd put the chords to them, and then the third day I'd, I'd work them out a little bit more, and then the fourth day I'd fool around with it, and maybe two weeks later we'd end up singing it in church. But now God gave me a challenge, told me, every new day there's a new song. Huh. And what that meant is when I, when I got to the keyboard, God was giving me an invitation to step into something I hadn't stepped into before. In other words, when I get up on that keyboard, God's going to give me a song I've never sung anywhere else before. I've never released it anywhere else. It's never even been in my head before. But God's going to give me a new song for right now because with every new day, there's a new song. With every new song, it releases a new realm of glory. And these are keys that God began to give me for charging the atmosphere, creating new atmospheres. And every meeting can be fresh and every meeting can be full and every meeting can be glorious. Why? Because it's not taking old manna and putting it on display, but it's saying, God, I don't know what it's all about. I don't know everything that's going to happen. I don't know what it's going to look like or what it's going to sound like. But God, whatever you have right now, we want that fresh bread from heaven. We want that new song, that new sound, that fresh revelation. And I don't know whether this was wisdom or whether I was just being led by the Spirit in it. But the Scriptures say, tell us to stir ourselves up in the Spirit, in our most holy faith. And it says to sing in the Spirit. I will sing in the Spirit. But I will also sing with my understanding. And God gave me this invitation that every new day there was a new song. And I couldn't, listen, in my own ability, I can't think of new songs like every day. I can't just like come up with a new song, a new idea, a new rhythm, a new lyric. I can't can't do that in my own ability. But the songs of heaven are limitless. The blessings of heaven are limitless. The miracles that are in that realm are limitless. And if we learn how to tap into that realm, oh, oh. now it's no longer I that liveth, but it's Christ that lives within me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Suddenly there's a force, a favor that comes upon your life with sounds from heaven to bring revelation from heaven. And it begins in the spirit. And I get up on the keyboard and I start singing in tongues and have other people singing in tongues. And it would only be a matter sometimes of seconds, sometimes a matter of minutes. And I began singing in the natural. I began singing in the spirit. Then I began singing with my understanding. And the songs would come. It would be something I'd never sung before. Something I'd never said before. Something I'd never even thought before. And God would begin releasing it in the atmosphere. And this is how I began moving in the new song understanding that God has given me power, a sign, really a sign, to speak in new tongues. Hallelujah. And there's a reason, there's a purpose for them. Now, for some of you in your lives, there might be some important decisions you have to make. You might even be at a point in your life right now where you're at a crossroads and you got to go this way or you got to go that way and you don't know which way to go. I'm going to challenge you tonight. When you go home tonight from this meeting, begin praying in the spirit all the way home, all the way. And when you tuck yourself in your little bed tonight and rest your head on your pillow, I believe that God's going to take you in a place from just being in the spirit. 
to all of a sudden being in a place of understanding and wisdom beginning to flow for you. Even in the midnight hour, direction beginning to come from God and revelation beginning to flow from God and visions beginning to open up for you that when you wake up in the morning, you're going to say, I know what I'm supposed to do for I got it from the Lord. I got it right out of the glory. (laughs) Do you think that God wants these signs to flow from your life simply for his benefit only? Or do you believe that there might be a little something in God that would say, I love to give good gifts to my children. Every good and every perfect gift comes from Macy's, from the Bay, Walmart. You know it doesn't come from Walmart. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, comes from the Father of lights. Father, the Father. The Father. Get this revelation right now. Hmm. Because in the natural, you may have had the worst father than anybody could ever have. In the natural, you may have had a disturbed father, a messed up father. But I tell you this tonight, you have a father that is so very good. You have a father that watches over you better than anybody else. You have a heavenly father who wants to give good gifts to you. Who? Just lift up your hands right now and just receive that power transfer. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming from above. It's in this realm. It's in the atmosphere. It's in this glory. There's so much faith in this room. There's so much glory in this room. There's so much anointing in this room. (laughs) There's miracles in this room, signs and wonders in this room tonight. Thank you, Lord. It says they will pick up serpents and even if they drink anything deadly... It will not hurt them. What is this talking? This is again talking about a very good father who watches over his children. And he says, you know, I'm giving you wisdom on how to walk. And I'm giving you direction on how to go. But even when you miss it, even when you mess up, and when other people try to slip you up, I'm still a good father. (laughs) And I'm going to be right there to protect you. You know, there's a supernatural covering in the glory. Yeah, there's a supernatural realm of protection, of shelter, of covering. The glory realm is the secret place of God. It's called the secret place, not because you can't find it. No, you're invited into that realm. But it's called the secret place because the enemy can't find you in that place. The secret, but he doesn't know how to access it. He has no permission to access it. He can't even get near to you when you're in the secret place. And this is that sign that God wants you to carry in your life. That when others try to trip you up and mess you up and try to do you dirty, that force of favor is all over your life. There's been such a power transfer released into your life that no lion can eat your head. Come on. No fire can burn you up when you're put in the middle of the furnace. I'm talking about glory tonight. I'm talking about heavenly glory and scriptural glory. You remember Daniel and the lions, Dan? Those lions couldn't eat him. You remember Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego? Come on. Thrown in the fire. Thrown into the furnace. You know what happens in the glory? You become incombustible. It's a whole nother realm altogether. It's a whole nother realm. <laughs> you got to go through the fire to come out like gold. You got to walk through some flames. But when you come out, you're not going to come out the way that you went in. You're going to come out better. Because that glory shines brighter in darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God goes on, says that they will lay their hands on the sick and they will get well. This is another sign that God wants to give you. 
He wants it to be an operation in your life as a believer. This is a, another power transfer that God wants to bring to your life. He wants to give you that power transfer to drive out demons. He wants to give you that power transfer to speak in new languages. He wants to give you that power transfer of divine supernatural protection. He wants to give you that power transfer to heal the sick, to minister, release the compassion of Christ everywhere you go. That when you stretch out your hands, it's not just your own hands being stretched out, but when you stretch out your hands, it's the very hands of Jesus that are being stretched out. Whoa. Yeah. You know, Jesus... When he was getting ready to return to heaven, he promised his disciples, he said, I'm not leaving you alone. They're all upset, you know. Jesus is leaving us. Our mentor, our spiritual master, the, the one that we've been following, serving, we've been learning from him. He's been teaching us and showing us all this great power demonstration, supernatural signs and wonders. I mean, this man speaks to storms and the, the peace just comes. This man calls dead people up out of the grave and they just rise. This man comes to the blind and, and he puts mud on their eyes and when they go wash their eyes, they can see. This man looks at the, 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 the worst man in all of society, the one that everybody has cast away. This man is crazy. He, he's over on that island all acting crazy, he's not even wearing clothes. His hair is all messy. And he's like a savage animal. And Jesus goes over and casts those devils out of him. Fills a whole field of pegs. They saw how many demons were in that man when they got into those pigs and those pigs began to run into the water. And in an instant, that man went back into his right mind. I was going through my library today and I saw a book that's sitting on the shelf. It was called Handbook of Healing for Physicians. And it was written by a dear friend of mine. His name is Dr. Philip gold fetter and he's a, a neurosurgeon and I, it just intrigued me because I didn't remember him giving that book to me but I put it off the shelf and sure enough it was signed and I, 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 I smiled real big because it was signed and he had given it to me and I didn't even remember and I, I don't even think I had flipped through the pages yet and it looked like such a good book and it was, he's a doctor and he wrote it for doctors to understand divine healing and to encourage them to move in prayer and faith as they were in their practice, practicing medicine to also practice faith in the middle of it and I was flipping through the, the book and I came to the table of contents and the very last chapter in in that book is a chapter that's titled diseases and sickness that Jesus cannot heal I thought oh this is interesting I wonder what's in that chapter so I turned in the whole book I turned to the very last chapter and that whole chapter was a total of one page one line and it said no not one no not one Every doctor needs to get a hold of that book right there. <laughs> the whole chapter, I love that. It's just Dr. Goldfeder's like that. Uh, no, not one. There's not one disease. Jesus was preparing to leave the earth. His disciples were troubled because he was leaving. But he said to them, come on. It's better. It's a good thing that I go. How could this be a good thing? You're, Jesus, you're everything to us. How could this be a good thing? Jesus said, it's a good thing that I go. Because you see, I've been around you. And you've been following me. And you've been catching up to me. And you, you've been watching me from a distance. Even sometimes close by. But I'm going. And when I go, I'm going to send another one. I'm going to send the promise of the Holy Spirit. Who's not just going to be in front of you teaching you some things. Not just going to be around you in your presence. Showing you and modeling some things. But I'm sending one that will teach you. That will comfort you. That will lead you. That will guide you into all truth. And this Holy Spirit is not going to reside outside of you. 
But this Holy Spirit is going to come right on the middle of who you are and empower you to be everything that I've ever created you to be. Whoa. It's so much better that Jesus went to heaven. You know why? Because when he sent the Holy Spirit, what he was doing, he was sending the presence of himself. He was sending the presence of God upon his people. That instead of just one Jesus walking around the earth and healing the sick, that every single believer would be able to receive this power transfer, this force of divine favor that would enable you to stretch out your hand to every sick person you meet, every place you go, every atmosphere you encounter, that you can carry the presence of Christ, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of glory, and minister to not just one or two, but the masses can be touched by the glory. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that absolutely amazing? Isn't that wonderful? Just lift up your hands right now in this place and just feel his favor. Just feel the favor of God upon you. Just feel his presence right now. Just feel his glory that's flowing just like a river in this place. Just since that atmosphere that's so filled with wisdom and revelation and blessing and increase and miracles and signs and wonders and the unlimited, unstoppable goodness of God. And right now, I just want you to receive from the realm. Just receive by faith. Just pull on the realm, pull it down, participating with that which you see in the Spirit. Just pull it and say, Lord, I receive your power transfer. I receive that power transfer that comes within, that comes upon, that comes around, surrounds me completely. Lord, I receive that power transfer to walk in your signs. I believe that tonight what the Lord asked me to do was to challenge you in regards to these signs that the scriptures say will follow in the life of a believer. Give you a challenge, an invitation to rise up into another level. Maybe you speak in tongues all the time, but maybe you haven't been stretching out your hands to heal the sick. Begin to heal the sick more than you've ever done before. Maybe you, you minister in the healing ministry and you operate in that and you, you speak in tongues and you pray in tongues and you, you sing in tongues, you worship in tongues, but you haven't been casting some spirits out that have been causing chaos and confusion. Begin doing it. Take your rightful authority in God as a believer and begin moving in that which God has appointed, assigned, and called you to do. Maybe some of you need to enter into some new realms of supernatural protection. Yeah. Your life feels so chaotic because you're always up and down, up and down, up and down. Good days, bad days. The enemy in here stealing from you and the next day you're fine. Then the next day he's stealing from you and the next day you're fine. The next day you're sick. The next day you're fine. The next day you Begin aggressively pursuing in the spirit Every sign that Mark 16 says will follow in the life of a believer. This whole camp meeting, this weekend and the, the days to come, is all about the force of God's favor. If we can understand this favor, we'll truly understand this, that there's not one moment, not one second of any day, any week, any year, that God does not have enough that God is not able to supply, that God is not able to pull over, push down, break through, and bust open for you. There is so much favor, and He's wanting you to become a conduit to release it. Yeah. 
I want you to stand up right now. Just stand up right now. Thank you, Jesus. As you stand, just lift up your hands to heaven. That's where your help comes from. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, right now, I thank you for that power transfer tonight. (laughs) That power transfer, the boldness that comes in that realm. The courage that comes in that realm. The inspiration that comes in that realm. The anointing that comes in this realm. The favor that's flowing in this realm. The signs and the wonders. The impartation that comes in this realm. Lord, tonight I thank you for that power transfer from heaven to earth. Earlier we saw a small display of the signs, the the gold sign, the gold dust began to break open over Sister Maeve and Lincoln and I was getting some and that young man over there and the lady in the back and a few people over here getting that gold. It's just a sign. Just a sign. A sign that makes you wonder, but a sign that also encourages and lets you know that God is moving in this place. And there's nothing that he cannot do. All things are possible for them that believe. There is nothing too difficult for God. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hearts. Lift up your spirits to receive. And let that power transfer come on you. And flow through you. And energize you. And empower you for that which God has for you. Let that glory come. Let that glory come. (laughs) Lord, let that glory come. That glory, 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 glory. Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) Whoa. Whoa. (laughs) Let that glory come. Let that glory, 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 glory. We're going from glory to glory. From one realm to another realm. From one level to another level. From one miracle to another miracle. Oh, that glory, 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 glory. that force of favor that comes in the glory of God just filling your life right now washing over you flooding you right now right now right now right now right now that power transfer right now in Jesus mighty name Right now.